there have been films about Oscar Wilde and lots of books about Oscar Wilde in the, in the past, but you've brought something new to a story we thought we all knew. Well, I'm certainly telling um, a part of the story that hasn't been told on film before, because uh, before my film, there were three other films, Robert Morley, Peter Finch and Stephen Fry, and all three of them uh, stopped the Oscar Wilde story really at the moment he goes into prison. And for me, uh, that was always the most interesting kind of starting point. And so my film charts the territory of uh, his, uh, his life in exile, the three years he survived prison, um, his liberty, his so-called liberty, which was actually another kind of imprisonment in a way. It's shocking. Some of the scenes are really shocking. Um, we know that you know, homophobic assaults and insults and, and crime takes place around the world. Um, but, but kind of seeing it in the context of a Victorian era and the, the savagery that was inflicted on him is, is actually very shocking. I think it is very shocking. And, uh, you know, he, the, the punishment uh, meted out by society just for being homosexual is still something that it's very hard, really, to get one's head around. But equally, uh, we think, and of course, in, in some respects, my life as a homosexual man now is, of course, a th such a different one from, from his experience. But if you look at the global gay experience, uh, the wild uh, scenario is roughly in the middle, actually, because on the other side uh, of the experiences, uh, things that are happening today in Russia, in India, in Jamaica, uh, in Uganda, um, in Syria. Um, in fact, um, we were just talking before, we made a magazine about the film and, and we, we, we made four pages of a kind of journey uh, through gay liberation so-called starting with Oscar and um, moving through Alan Turing uh, and then we found this amazing photograph of a guy being chucked off a roof in Syria in 2015 so this issue is still uh, a very you know important and inexplicable to me issue it's amazing that we're still talking about this all these years later, that there are more than 70 countries in the world where it is still criminalised and, and punishable by death in, in, in the countries you've named. I can't believe we're having this conversation in 2018. So things have moved forward, but what, what's wrong? <laughs> things have moved forward for, for some of us and, and, and backwards uh, for others, because in one sense, in, in, uh, in, in the Arab world, uh, it was easier to be homosexual before. Uh, uh, now, uh, so things there, uh, you know, have definitely tightened up in the last uh, twenty years. So yes, it's extraordinary. You know, the, the issue we make about sex in general uh, as human beings is, uh, you know, it gives us a clue about what imbeciles we are in a way. I think. Do you think Oscar, when he was going through, the, you know, the the conviction and the trial and the savagery afterwards, there would never have been a part of him that. That, I mean, today we, we know that um, it's absolutely ludicrous to be homophobic. It makes no sense. It's completely unethical and immoral. Was there that sense circling him at that time? Would he have ever thought, this is crazy. Why are you convicting me for being who I am? I think he uh, would have known uh, the, the price. Uh, you know, the, the point about Victorian society is a, a certain amount of stuff was tolerated but uh, provided it wasn't named and uh, wasn't out in the open. I think uh, the, the, the real problem and the madness of Oscar Wilde, and I think the thing that in the end is very charming about him, is what an idiot he was at this point, because he took the Marquis of Queensbury to court because the Marquis of Queensbury left a card at Wilde's club uh, just addressed to Oscar Wilde posing as a sodomite. And what Wilde should have done was think, thought, oof, Christ, I better get rid of that, instead of which he prosecuted uh, uh, Queensbury for um, libel. And of course, the libel was true. And uh, so the other thing that I think is fascinating and fabulous about Wilde, he was a big star. Uh, and like a lot of big stars, he kind of got blinkered about what the world around him actually was. He thought the world was all kind of made for him. And it wasn't. Uh, and, and that was his, his enormous, fatal mistake in life. When you started this whole journey a decade or so ago or so, you can't have known then that these posthumous pardons were going to come last year. No. So, I mean, 
how did that make you feel? I mean, it's made a lot of people feel quite angry, actually, but um, th did you feel the timing in a way? There you were about to tell the story um, and the world had changed. Something significant had happened or not, not really? Not really. Mm. I think it's a typical kind of last fart of British hypocrisy, really, because a pardon is not what Wilde needs. He needs an apology and possibly um, some money for his grandchildren, I would say. I would, I would take... Uh, and also... When we were making our magazine, we thought, oh, God, it'd be great to find the Queen's uh, signature on the proclamation. But that, it, has, it doesn't even have that. So it's a typical example of, uh, of the maladroitness, I think, of, uh, of our government, in a way. That they think a pardon, a pardon, because a pardon means the crime still exists. Uh, so it's completely wrong. And uh, yes, it's kind of, it makes one feel slightly angry. Why was it so important to you to make this film? We, we talked about this about a decade ago, I think. <laughs> yes. So it's always been there, hasn't it? And my goodness, blood, sweat and tears, it's what it's cost you. <laughs> to be honest, when I first uh, thought about it, it was really because uh, I was not uh, getting any roles myself in the, in the cinema, uh, good ones. And I could see things kind of just, you know, getting more and more underwhelming in terms of what I was being offered. And I thought, I really want to try and write myself, you know, a really amazing role. And, uh, I, and when I was thinking about it, I thought, well, what would be the, the easiest thing for me to get financing for and, and what would fit in, really, with who I am? And uh, I'd just done, quite successfully, a, a couple of wild films. And I'd been in the theatre uh, doing wild a lot. And uh, it's a great match for me uh, in terms of an actor. And uh, I thought, wow, the, the idea of Wild in Exile could really tell the story of everything uh, about uh, that I that I would want to tell if I was only going to ever tell one story. This this would be it. What well, the moments along the way when the funding fell out, as it inevitably does when one's trying to finance a film, that you thought, no, I can't. I think uh, it was the, the as the years went on, because at first I did really I was thinking, oh, this would be a great role. But then as the years went on and I got older and my own career was like a kind of uh, block dot of light at the end of a long tunnel. Uh, it became a kind of um, life and death thing, which is not, it's not necessarily a good place to be in because it, it, it kind of tightens you up and makes you uh, very touchy. And, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it, it was um, many times I thought, God, it's just not going to happen. Always what happens in these things, some little, you just about to say, OK, that's it, I'll, I'll give up. And then some little thing happens. You go, oh, no, maybe it's going to work out. And so you're off to the races again. And so it's very difficult to actually cut something like that off, <laughs> really. And the phrase that I've seen so many times in relation to the film is, it's a role you were born to play. Well, um, I think it's a role uh, that I understand very well. Um, it's, a, it's the type of language that I understand very well, the type of humour, uh, I think, uh, is my type of humour. I think Wild uh, being in character for me, uh, I think, has been much more successful than uh, being a leading actor or a juvenile actor. So I think uh, character is great for me, and I think Wild for me is someone I feel an enormous, enormous affection for. And so making the film, in a way, uh, it has been great because uh, there's always been that uh, as well, it, it, that affection and and. Um, that I have that, that I have for him, and I hope what I hope in the film is that that affection goes across the screen, and other people get turned on by him too. It's like a tribute to him, not by him. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like you, you. This is a tribute to him. Yes, it's. Um, I think it's the true story of what we did to him, and uh, because uh, in typical British style, Empire style, it wasn't just the punishment; it was the punishment after the punishment. Uh, because the punishment happened and then he was had this kind of slow roasting crucifixion for three years afterwards where he was where he fe felt like he was at liberty but actually he was just getting more and more hemmed in and um, that's what we did to him that's what that's what we can do to a man just for being uh, gay and uh, you may think oh thank god that was 130 odd years ago but it's still happening so I think it's still a good story 
it's interesting that we've got the Russian World Cup coming up and there's, there's been advice been issued by all the football supporters groups to people going over there, you know, LGBT groups, just have to, you have to be a bit careful, be a bit careful, be, you know, that advice is going out now too. And so Russia's hosting this big international event, the friendly games or whatever it's supposed to be, against this astonishing backdrop of people being told, don't be yourself when you go over there. It just seems shocking, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, the situation in Russia is unbelievable. I was at one point, um, I worked for UNAID, and uh, we went on a couple of trips to Russia. And, you know, uh, the gay people in the heartlands of Russia, some of them don't even know about the existence of the HIV virus, for example. So they're completely kept uh, in the dark about everything. If you want to, if you do fight, think you've got HIV, you're much better off going to hospital saying you're a junkie than saying you're a homosexual. So that's really how the worth uh, you have. And um, it's, um, it's a very tough place uh, to be gay. Do you hope your film is going to be then a part of the, the international story of this man who was so great and so revered and his works are still worshipped today? And it's kind of a rounding off of the story, albeit a very sad end. But it's a, you've told, you, you've kind of, you, what you have done is is bring people into his world, the entire world, tell, telling the entire story. So you're an important part of the Oscar Wilde story. In a way, I, I, I think so. Uh, mm. Because the other stories, quite rightly, they, they well, not quite rightly, I don't think they dared go to that uh, to that stage. You know, I think they, they wanted to, they, there's no accident they deal with him as a success and then that's it. Uh, but uh, I think, uh, I think you know, there's always a time to tell uh, the rest of the story, and I think uh, this is this is a good um, this is a good opportunity and a good time for it. What about all the talk about Oscars? You're getting an Oscar for Oscars. <laughs> an Oscar for Oscar. Well, just uh, I can't even think. Uh, getting a good review is enough uh, for me at the moment, and getting uh, and having people uh, you know enjoy the film is amazing. Just as it's absolutely horrific when people hate it. I mean. I don't know how people uh, deal with... Uh, it's so difficult to deal with people being critical. I don't know how one ever manages to organise that because you, you end up being like a kind of pregnant whale. Uh, and um, so, really, uh, I, I haven't even thought... I'm just now, you know, we've, we're coming up to the opening on June the 15th and um, I'm just, uh, you know, concentrating everything I can on... Um, you know, promoting as much as I can, making awareness about it uh, as, as much, as, making as much awareness as I can possibly get, and um, hoping for the best in terms of the box office. You know. Wouldn't that be a wonderful way to, to crown this whole story if, if there's Oscar's glory for the film, after the, how hard you've worked to bring it to the screen? Well, I think uh, anything. Uh, I think one of the great things about how hard it's been is it's... it's um, made a, a great difference to me personally because I don't think I knew what inner resources I had uh, until this 10 year uh, kind of stretch and uh, so I feel um, I feel quite uh, well empowered I know it's a, a lady's word but I feel quite <laughs> empowered by it. You can have it. <laughs> can I have it? Thanks. <laughs> it, what's the acting industry like now in terms of being, people being able to be themselves, being able to be a gay actor uh, and, you know, there's, are there restrictions on roles? Do you think it's better because it's 20 years ago, 30 years ago? It certainly. I wasn't. think things are changing, yeah. definitely. Um, we have a gay action star, after all. Um, on the other hand, uh, things aren't changing. There's lots of places where, uh, where actors who are... I mean, I, don't think, I, don't, I still don't think it's an ideal uh, thing to be. Um, I think in the English and the Hollywood system, things are definitely... Everything's moving this year. So um, I think uh, th things will move uh, more and keep moving for, for gay actors. But at the same time, uh, I think, uh, you know, I've been going around uh, Europe a, a lot promoting the film. And you see like, in other countries that, that are also very liberal countries, it's still, uh, actors are still afraid to, uh, to be honest about their sexuality. Uh, and... Um, so uh, there's, you know, it's it's still this weird issue. But I think this you, you this will be part of taking the story out. I think this film, won't it? I mean, well, it would be great if it was. Mm. Um, uh, that would be fantastic. And I think, you know, I think in our, I think, I think we're very lucky in our country in many ways. I think one of the things I think that's amazing about history is it gives us an opportunity 
to look at ourselves now with the sense of, of history. So, so in one sense, uh, in the UK, of course there are things, bad things happening, by the way, and there certainly are. Uh, Northern Ireland just the other day, you know, there was a very nasty homophobic attack. But in general terms, we've moved so far. And I think we should attack the future with a kind of victorious, positive outlook, rather than the outlook that you tend to get when you, can, when you only think back a year or two years in, hist in historical terms, which in a way is what's happened with the virtual world, because so much happens now in six months that you don't really think that there's a past beyond a year and a half ago. And so I think people deal with the problems we have sometimes in a quite aggressive way, whereas you could be dealing with them in a, in a, in a way that took in just how huge the changes have been in the last hundred years for all of us, really, uh, and, 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 in a, and move forward in a more positive uh, way. And I think uh, this could be good for that too. Is there someone else's story that we need that needs to be told in a way, like you told Oscar's story? Um, God, I'm sure there's tons yeah. uh, of, of people's. Uh, yes, I mean, I think, uh, well, Alan Turing's story was told. Uh, um, and I think that was a, that was a very valuable mm -hmm. uh, thing as well. Although, again, that was that was slightly Hollywoodized because he was he was kind of heterosexualized slightly. Mm. And um, I think the, the amazing thing about Turing was uh, it wasn't quite dealt with in the film, possibly. But um, I'm sure there's, uh, there's, there's tons of things uh, th that should be done. Are you going to make, ever make another film again? Write another film? Direct another film? I would love to. Uh, I would definitely like to. But at the same time, uh, you know, you have, to, you have to, I don't know, this could be a one-off. Uh, it could be the beginning of something fantastic. It could be uh, the end. Uh, <laughs> you never know. Uh, but yes, I would love to uh, keep going. You know, I'm, I think the movie business is a very difficult one, uh, complicated, and I think you need nerves of steel uh, to, to take part in it. And I don't know uh, whether I uh, have those nerves still in a way, because uh, you, you need to have a way of dealing with problems and crisis mm. uh, in a calm way. And uh, <laughs> I have a tendency to hysteria. You did it, though, didn't you? I did it, yeah. You did it. I did yeah. it. What an achievement. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.